All right, module 4.11. All right, asking your golden prospect to link to you, part two. Now, I wanted to put this all into one video, but there's this is probably going to be a three or four parter. So, fasten your seatbelts. This is, the trip's going to be a little bit longer than we thought, just because, uh, well, I want to make sure I cover everything you need to know about how to land a link from your golden prospect. You did everything, all the research you've done so far. It, you, it has to uh, turn into a link for you. So, we got to make sure that happens. All right, I want to talk about finding the right axe handle. All right, so what is finding the right axe handle? When I was a kid, and I think it was 1979, the United States had a huge energy crisis. There was long gas lines, and you, the lines just went forever. I really don't remember those lines, but they happened while I was 10 years old. And what happened is, well, the energy bills went up really high, and my dad decided to do something about it. And what did he do? He got rid of our furnace and put in a wood-burning stove to, uh, to fight it. And he put a little American flag up on his uh, chimney. Or maybe he threatened to do that. I can't remember which. But why do I say all that? Well, I was the eldest of uh, three boys, and I have a sister too. Uh, guess who split the wood? It was me. And I felt sorry for myself. I was, it was fun at first, but as I got older... And I was the only one of my friends who had wood-burning stoves. And, uh, and I had to go out there early in the morning to, to chop wood. And I really kind of felt sorry for myself when I did it. And, uh, and I would do it in the dark. And I wouldn't tell my dad that. Uh, the reason I did it in the dark is because I was embarrassed to do it. He always thought I was just being lazy or something. No, I did it in the morning when all my friends were sleeping. Why am I telling you this? I have no idea. Uh, but one thing, as much as I hated about uh, finding the right axe, uh, you, uh, chopping wood, is I always made sure when I did chop wood, we used a maul, not an axe, but I used an axe handle or a maul handle. I never just used the axe head. Why? Because it wouldn't have worked. So let's talk about finding the right axe handle as you ask your golden prospect to link to you. And one of the things that a lot of link builders make the mistake is they come in with zero axe handles. And that's a problem. Why? Because uh, it's hard to earn a link when you have no leverage. And what is an axe handle? It's just a lever. That's all it is. So let's talk about some leverage that you can put into your uh, link request as you reach out to your golden prospect for the link. Now, remember, I said the best way to earn a link from somebody, whether it's your golden prospect, silver prospect, anybody really, is uh, make sure the link is more important to them than it is to you. It makes earning the link a lot easier. And I know a lot of people probably say, well, how is that possible? Well, it is possible. I'm going to show you. All right. Here are some of my axe handles that uh, you could use. And if you use it right, what will happen is it will make the link more important to your golden prospect than it will you. Let's talk about some of the ways you could do that, though. Well, what if, uh, what if what you wrote and what you're asking them to link to helps their readers in some way? And there's a lot of different ways it can help their readers. Maybe it fills a gap in their own content. That could be. Or maybe uh, it takes their content to another level. Something like if they write about an apple pie filling recipe, what do you do? You write about an apple pie recipe on your own blog that uses their filling. And there, that's how you earn the link. So you you reference their recipe in your uh, in your own recipe. So yeah, that's a, fun, it's a silly example, but yeah, if you can write on something that takes their content to another level, there's going to be a really good chance that you're going to earn a link that way, and that'll make them linking to you uh, maybe more important than it is for you to earning the link from them. Now, let's talk about uh, the real way, though, that you can get an axe handle that makes the link more important to them than it does to you. Sure, if it helps the readers, that's an axe handle. But let's talk about, but it's not going to be, that alone isn't going to, uh, I, I don't want to say it won't get the job done. A lot, of, a lot of prospects care about their readers. I mean, golden prospects, especially because they're, they're leaders in their, their industry for a reason. And they really uh, take that seriously. So, but what 
you could do is you need a little more than that in order to get that prospect to value the link they give you more than you value it. You need more than just helping their readers. But that could be enough. Especially if you did a really good job on your content, your link bait. All right, another thing you can do to get them to link to you is maybe what you wrote is something that you're asking them to link to is something that reinforces one of the major tenets of their core philosophy. And for instance, when I reached out to Eric Ward for a link, what did I do? I made sure that it was based upon uh, the relationship building because I knew that was the core philosophy of Eric's link building. It was about relationship building. So I asked him to link to a piece that was about relationships and uh, how that plays big time into a link building. But guess what? That didn't work. It just didn't earn a link from him. And will it earn a link from your golden prospect? Yes, maybe, depending on your golden prospect. As long as your golden prospect isn't the best link builder who ever lived and who didn't like linking out just on a whim. He had to have a reason for linking to you. But if your golden prospect isn't a link builder, they're going to they're gonna hand links out a lot easier than, than, say, a link builder will. All right, so that could earn you the link. But still, I don't think that makes the prospect value the link they give you more than you value it. I think it gives them a reason to link to you. That's great. Uh, maybe it does help their readers. Maybe it does reinforce one of their core philosophies. And by able by linking to you, they can say, I'm really proud of what Joe did with his piece here. He took it to the next level. I have always talked about how important link building is, relationship building is in link building. And he wrote a piece that really brings it home. So that could earn a link from them. But I don't think it's going to make them value the link more than, than you. So we're going to have to keep searching for something, the right ax handle that will make them like the link more than you. What if it promotes their product? Oh, boy. We're getting a little closer. Let me, I will, no, I'm not going to show you. I was going to show you. Uh, you could do a review. You could find your Golden Prospects ebook and just write a thousand word review on what you liked about it, recommend it, what was awesome about it, and then have links in that post linking over to your Golden Prospects book or service or whatever. And you could do it for all their services. You don't have to just do it for one of their books. If they wrote five books, do it for all five books. It's good content. Site, your site could always use more content. Your readers will dig it. It's a review of somebody in your industry. You may save them money. They may look at your review and not really want to buy one of the books, but then read one of the other books, reviews that you did, and they buy that book instead. So when you can promote their product with your link bait, now you're starting to get into a position where they may value the link more than you. All right, let's let's continue on. But you can't do obviously you can't do that with all your link prospects. Hardly will, there will hardly ever come a time where you build content just for a particular link prospect. But if you do, it's always going to be for a golden prospect. So maybe you get them just to link at first, the first link you ask them to link to is maybe just a post on uh, review. So if you look at the Your SEL Squad site, I have reviews on there. And you can probably find out who my link prospects are by finding out uh, <laughs> who's, uh, who, who, who the reviews are about and uh, who the courses are. I, it's a time qu I took a bunch of courses and I, uh, I wrote reviews for each of them. All right, so... That's one way if you promote their product, but it's it's a little harder though because you're only going to get a link over to a piece of content that promotes them. How is that going to help you? Well, getting a link from them will help for sure. That'll help your, I don't want to say your domain authority, but it'll help your link equity coming into your site. Uh, it'll give more strength to your keyword rankings by getting this link from a golden prospect. Is it going to make you a lot of money? No, but it is just the first link. It's the beginning of a relationship. They give you the just, just a link over to something that promotes their product. That's uh, 
that's a very doable relationship building tactic, if you ask me. All right, here is uh, my favorite axe handle. How can you make your golden prospect like your link they give you better than you like it? <laughs> well, you know, you like, you like it, but how can you make it so they like linking to you more than you like them linking to you? Then, well, it's easy. Make it part of a bigger deal. And this is where a lot of link builders blow it. They don't put any creativity into how to get this other person to link to them. And that's something, well, let's talk about it. Part of a bigger deal. For instance, hey, Stacy, I dig your site. And I would love it if uh, you would link to me. And if you did, I'll do this for you. And then Stacy goes, wait a minute, I would really like if you did that for me. And what, all you want from me is a link? Yeah, I'll do it. That's a perfect example of a golden prospect or any prospect getting more value from the link they give you than you get from it. All right, now tell me, Matt, some of the things that you can do for a prospect, a golden prospect, to get them to link to you. We're talking bribes, right? Yeah, these are bribes. What what can we do? I don't really think they're bribes. I think they're just business transactions. Let's get into it. If you link to me, I'll promote you in my newsletter. And I have 75,000 people on my list. Or I have a client with 50,000 members on their list. I use that newsletter. I Whenever I have a client that has a, a hefty newsletter or even just a really tight newsletter that is niche specific and there's great open rates on it i will use their newsletter as an axe handle hey i will uh i was checking your site out i really think it'll be a good fit for our readers i don't know if you're familiar with this newsletter but now give them a link over to where the newsletter subscription page is i would love to uh to feature you in the next issue that we send out via the newsletter and you know what they dig that they dig it, they dig it, they dig it. Because one of the problems that your golden prospect has is what most golden pe people in business do. They, they have to market. And they may be great at what they do. They may write great books. They may even create great courses. But they still have to market those things. And marketing is something that they probably have their mind on. I don't want to say 24-7, but it takes a major portion of their uh, thinking on a daily basis and energy is probably, how am I going to sell more books? How am I going to do this? How am I going to uh, get enough more money because to get increases uh, over last year? And it's a, basically, they, they're, they're marketers. Your golden prospects, if they have products and services, they're marketers. All right, so you promote them in your newsletter. Or you promote them in your, if you're an agency, you promote them in your client's newsletter. Or, and this one's deadly. Let's say your prospect, I, can, I wish I can tell you my clients, but I can't. I'll take you right there and show you the example. Uh, let's say I run a auto parts business, or my client does, and we sell carburetors. I know there's no, it's only older cars that have carburetors. I know nothing about cars, even though I have a lot of clients. I have some really good clients in the industry. Uh, I know nothing about them. My wife changes our oil. She checks it. She does <laughs> everything on our vehicles eh, because I don't know anything about it. But what I do know is I have a client, let's say he sells carburetors, and he sells a lot of carburetors. I'm talking uh, $3 million worth of carburetors every year from his website. So what happens to the people who, uh, who, who can I get to, to link to them? And we were going after e-commerce sites and having a little bit of issue with it. So that's when we figured out, if you link to me, what I'll do for you is I'll add your product to my site's internal search results. And that's really easy to do. It's, if, if, for instance, if you have a client 
that sell well we'll, we'll we'll stay with the carburetor so i reach out to spark plug companies and say hey i know you sell a great spark plug i see it i see your your numbers on it i see the performances that you get you're getting out of it you did a really good job with it but you know what we sell carburetors at our uh, on our site in fact we do about three million a year with it and we get about eight hundred thousand visitors a year with it. so we get a lot of people coming through and we get people asking us for spark plugs I, I go look at my internal search results and i see people are looking for spark plugs all the time we're just turning them away and sending them to a to a a, a, a four or four page basically saying we don't have that product and we redirect them over to the carburetor page well that is not what those people are looking for what we would like to do is maybe add your site and your spark plugs, not to our inventory, but whenever somebody searches for spark plugs in our internal search re- engine, the mechanism, we will say, oops, we don't have, we don't carry spark plugs, but you know who does? Our good buddies over at sparkplugs.com. And then we'll have a link right there. That's a perfect way to, to help somebody out help your, your, your clients, your, your customers out, because if they're searching for something, your visitors rather, and then they can't find it, they're going to go some, to some other site. And what if your competitor also sells that part? Well, now you just lost somebody. So instead, it'd be better to refer that, that visitor over to somebody who can give them a spark plugs. Now what you do is you reach out to the spark plug company, the owner of the spark plug company says, hey, yeah, like we sell a lot of carburetors. We would like to add your spark plug to it, but Would you be cool with that? Starting up a referral relationship like that? And that's just how I ask. Would you be cool with that? Because would you like to start a referral relationship up between our two sites? And if it's a hefty client, of course the prospect wants to do that. And they say, okay, what do you got? Yes, please add me to your internal search. What would you like from us? A link. And then, well, if you link to us from your FAQ page or from your about us page or even from your resource page. I think we consider that a fair uh, referral. Trey will call that a referral relationship. Good with you. And I'm going to tell you this. Yes, it's good with us because they're getting something out of it. They're getting tied in to your traffic. They're getting tied in to your website. They're getting something more than what they're, you're getting from them. Now, is it hurting you by adding them to your internal search results? No. If somebody's searching for something on your site and you don't have it, it's just good user experience to be able to send them to somebody that does have it. Give them, they're going to find somebody that has it. You might as well be the one that refers them over to the spark plug company and then build a relationship with the spark plug company. Maybe they'll add your carburetors to, to their internal search. Maybe they will. But right now, as a link builder, you're just trying to get a link from that spark plug company. And you just ask for a link over to your index page. And that's another great thing. When you earn links this way, when it's part of a bigger deal, they'll link to your sales page. They'll link to your home page. They'll link to whatever page you ask them to. It's not a link over to some post about a product. It's not a link over to... To, to, to something like that at all. It's something that'll go to your money page. So that's why I like these types of axe handles. Now, other ways you can do this too is you could reach out to and say, hey, we, we're doing this right now. And, it, and it, in fact, we earned another link with it today. Reaching out to, and I can't tell you the niche, it's a different client, but we reach out to somebody that's, uh, to people that are in our industry but do not sell the same product. And we reached out and said, hey, we would love to introduce you to our our site visitors and our customers. We don't sell what you sell. We only sell this one thing and two things, three things. But we would love to introduce our readers to you. Are you good with that? Of course, what do they say? Uh, Yes. What do I have to do? Well, here, just answer these. uh, And then what we do is we email them. As interview questions, seven of them. We make the first two questions on the interview questions that we send them all about them, and the rest are just standard that we send everybody that it turns out into a good interview. And you could find those. I said it before in another video. Look up uh, good pod, 
podcast interviews. Google that. Good podcast interviews. That phrase, and uh, you'll find uh, no good podcast interview questions. Yeah, Google that, and then that'll find uh, some good questions. What you do, you have five stock ones that you're going to send to everybody. Then you just go to their site and write two personal ones right at the beginning. So what happens is you send them the email, they respond back with the answers. Then you write a little intro to it, and the intro is something could be simple as, hey, now that you got your XYZ shopping in out, out of the way, how about we introduce you to somebody really cool in the industry that we talked into out of spending some of her very precious time in uh, interviewing uh, and sitting down for an interview? And then we post the interview. So we talk them up in an intro paragraph, then we just copy and paste the 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 interview questions they email back and at that point we have a nice little interview p- page and we dress it up a little bit and put their headshot on it and make sure everything's set up right and then we link back and say hey thank you very much we are very happy that you did this for us if you feel like linking to it that's fine but we are very happy to be able to introduce you to our co- clients Now, what is that? If you link to me, I'll do this for you. That's kind of like the reverse, but if they'll do it, just, but if if you say, but if you come out right away and say, hey, if you link to me, I'll do this to you, they may get a little nervous. So I like to do say, provide something. Hey, I'd love to add you to our product, to our site's internal search results. And they're like, well, I want that. Now that's something they want. What do I got to do to get it? What do I got to do to get in your newsletter? What do I got to do to get in your search results? What do I got to do to get introduced to your readers in an interview? What do I got to do? Well, link to me. But if you start out by saying, if you link to me, I'll do this, then they're going to think that you're scamming them and you're just another link builder and that you're, you're lame and they'll, they'll, they won't even, they'll filter you out. That's why it's important to lead with this. So, hey, I would love to get you in the newsletter. I think I found a way to do it. Uh, are you cool with that? Yeah, I want in. Your newsletter looks awesome. Well, cool. That it, we'll just start up a referral relationship with one another. You, I'll put you in the newsletter, and you link to me from this page. You see how easy it is? That's just a little turnaround. That That's how you use the axe handles. Let them see your, your gift or what you have to offer before you ask for the link. All right, reciprocation. Like I said, I'm going to have to do a part three on this too. Uh, Reciprocation comes down to if you do enough good things for them, and by this point, this is your golden prospect, you've done a lot of good things for them. Have you done enough for them yet? Because if you haven't, if you haven't, uh, I want to say that, uh, first of all, you won't know if you've done enough for them to earn the link, reciprocation until you ask about it and then it'll be too late to do anything about it if they say no and you're like oh i should have came in with more leverage but now you blew the deal unless you uh used an out like i told you in the other video then you're just going to come in with another opportunity and another pitch for them later on maybe a few weeks down the road all right so just relying on reciprocation i want to say that's a fool's bet it just doesn't work why because uh it's not enough Maybe it's enough for some prospects, but even the lowest level prospects in your pipeline that you would even want to get a link from, their even reciprocation with them isn't enough for the most part. 90% of them is, will just say no. They'll just ignore you. That's why I don't like reciprocation. Reciprocation is something that too many people, lazy people rely on and not coming up with better angles with how to get people to link to them now will this and i'll get into i'll get into reciprocation no i won't get into reciprocation i'm done talking about reciprocation do something nice for your prospects that's reciprocation to get them to even look at you and consider any of these opportunities you make for them that's why it's important that you uh you know not count on reciprocation as a tactic for you to get the link it's not enough it's it's like a garnish yeah it's parsley i guess is a garnish and i guess it's healthy 
but you wouldn't just eat the parsley. You like the steak and potatoes with it, right? So you got to have steak and potatoes. So if you're going to get them to link to you, they have to like the link more than you do. So help their readers, reinforce one of their uh, core philosophies, promote, promote one of their products, or f figure out a bigger deal. And uh, do that, and you're going to have the, an axe handle that's going to give you a lot more weight when you're asking for the link. Now, in the next module, module 4.12, we're going to get into a top secret way of asking for a link that's very, very, I don't, what's the right phrase I'm using? It's very ninja style, but that's old school. It's more, uh, it's more psychological. How do you psychology to get the link you want from your golden prospect? I'll see you there on module 4.12, which will be part three of asking your golden prospect to link to you. So I'll see you there.